I love Greek food, but as a vegan, it does not love me back. There's a lot of meat. What do you mean you don't eat no meat? Oh, that's okay. That's okay, I make lamb. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make three epic vegan Greek recipes. A hearty moussaka that is the ultimate comfort food, a lovely and easy Greek salad, and some crazy good crispy zucchini fritters. I've also invited some of my subscribers to try these recipes, including actual Greek people. So stay tuned to the end to see what they think. I'm starting off with our moussaka, which is probably the most popular Greek dish for good reason. It's a layered casserole. You have fried eggplant and potatoes on the bottom, a rich tomatoey meat sauce, and then finally, a creamy white sauce on top. It's all baked together in the oven. It is outrageous in the best way possible. Let's start on our first layer, the eggplant and potatoes. I like to slice the eggplant crosswise in half and then lengthwise. And you wanna slice them pretty thinly, so if you are mildly crazy like me, get out your measuring tape. A scant quarter inch thick is what you're looking for. Sprinkle some salt on the eggplant, let that rest for 30 minutes. This is gonna draw out some of the excess moisture and make the eggplant creamy and tender. I like adding potatoes because they add some heft and structure and body, body, body. They add some body to the moussaka. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add some potatoes. You wanna slice them a bit thicker than the eggplant, about one third inch thick slices. So you have a nice, thick, juicy bottom layer, bottom layer. All right, let's go check on our eggplant. I'm just dabbing away some of the excess moisture here as well as a little bit of salt. So the eggplant isn't too salty. We're gonna roast both the eggplant and potatoes in the oven at the same time. Eggplant does need a generous amount of olive oil, otherwise it will end up dry and rubbery. I like to grate some fresh garlic into the eggplant for a little extra flavor. For your potatoes, add those to a separate sheet pan in a single layer, drizzle with some olive oil, and season with oregano, salt, and pepper, and we'll bake these and the eggplant both at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. When they're done, they'll be perfectly tender and a bit browned and just really, really gorgeous and fantastic. Next up, the meat sauce. It starts off like a pretty standard meat sauce for a lasagna with a chopped onion and some grated garlic, but it's not a lasagna sauce, it's a Greek sauce. So we're gonna add some herbs and spices that lend a subtly sweet, aromatic flavor. I also like a little heat, so I'm adding some red pepper flakes. And now for the meat of our meat sauce. Since this is a fairly involved dish with a couple different components, I am relying on a shortcut store-bought vegan ground beef or meat. But if that's not your thing or you can't find something like this in your grocery stores, I do have a homemade alternative meat substitute on the blog. It does take a little bit more time than this stuff, so I leave the trade-off up to you. To supplement our meat sauce, we're also gonna add in some shrooms. Not those kinds of shrooms, these kinds of shrooms. These are cremini mushrooms. We're gonna chop them up finely, and that's going to stretch out our sauce further, but also add more of that earthy, savory flavor. I've got a large saute pan over medium high. We're looking to cook the onions until they're really soft and golden. Add a splash of water if needed to deglaze the pan, then the garlic, herbs, spices, and tomato paste. Those need a few minutes, make sure to stir frequently. It is smelling so good in here, I wish you could be here with me. Now add in the meat, the vegan meat, the fake meat, whatever you wanna call it. I like to call it meat meat, like I'm the road runner. I don't really know why, but it's fun. And it should only take a few minutes to start browning. Next, you'll add in the shrooms for two to four minutes. And now for the deglazing step. My favorite step, probably because it involves wine. A big can of good quality crushed tomatoes, since this is a tomato meat sauce. A Little more salt and pepper a bay leaf, and optionally, one last ingredient that's going to supercharge the umami in this sauce, porcini mushroom powder. Simmer this for eight to 10 minutes or until it thickens and the liquid is mostly gone. It should look like a thick and rich meat sauce. Meat, meat. I like to fold in some basil for a fresh element at the end. Let's give it a taste. It's meaty, but not like in your face meaty because there's so many other flavors going on. It's very satisfying and hearty. By the way, if you want to make moussaka for the holidays or a big dinner party, you can actually make all of the different components a few days ahead of time. Just layer everything in your baking pan, pop it in the fridge, and then on the big day, all you have to do is put it in the oven. And now it's time for the top layer of our moussaka, the bechamel. We'll start with the standard bechamel base, a roux. Heat up a half stick of vegan butter, or you can use olive oil. Once it's melted and bubbly, add in the all-purpose flour. Whisk this constantly for a minute or two to cook off the raw flour. We're gonna pour in some cashew cream here instead of plain old plant-based milk 
because the bechamel in a traditional moussaka should be very thick and rich and that's what cashew cream is gonna do for us. So to make the cashew cream, I'm using raw cashews that have been soaked overnight. For a quick soak, you can just boil them in water on the stove for 15 minutes. We're blending the soaked cashews with a good amount of water and a good amount of nutritional yeast to mimic some of the cheesiness you would get from Parmesan. Salt and pepper, of course, and freshly grated nutmeg, which is pretty excellent in a bechamel. A high-powered blender is your best bet so all the cashew bits get pulverized and let it run for a few minutes on the highest speed. Make sure you pour the cashew cream into the roux gradually in stages and whisk after each round. It should get really creamy and thick pretty quickly, much creamier than a standard bechamel. When it's done, I like to pour it in a bowl so the sauce doesn't overheat or thicken too much. It smells amazing in here. It is time to assemble everything. We're gonna start with just a thin layer of oil on the bottom so nothing sticks. You could also just use cooking spray. Just a little bit is necessary. First, layer the potatoes across the bottom of the pan, then add half of the meat sauce. Smooth it out nicely like so. Now the roasted eggplant all across the pan and the rest of the meat sauce on top of that. And finally, our gorgeous bechamel. I like to finish with a sprinkling of panko breadcrumbs for a slightly crunchy contrast to the creaminess, but that's totally optional. A little drizzle of olive oil, some flaky sea salt, and we're gonna pop this baby in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 35-ish minutes. The moussaka is in the oven, and now we need something a little lighter and fresher to balance all of that richness, and a Greek salad is perfect for that. It's called horiatiki in Greek, and there's just a few ingredients, so the quality of ingredients really matters. We're gonna start with our dressing. A tablespoon and a half of red wine vinegar, sea salt and black pepper to taste, a half teaspoon of dried oregano, and three tablespoons of the best extra virgin olive oil you have. All right, set this aside while we chop up our vegetables. So I'm starting off with some heirloom tomatoes. We are very lucky in California, these are still in season. If tomatoes aren't in season where you are or you can't find good quality ones, you might wanna stick with the smaller grape or cherry tomatoes because they're a little bit sweeter. Just wanna give them a chance to start absorbing the flavor in the vinaigrette. All right, set this aside one more time and we'll start on our cucumber, world's largest cucumber. Like this is a baton. But seriously though, who needs a cucumber this big? For everyone at home, a regular sized medium English cucumber works great. And you'll wanna slice it into half moons. In go the cukes. And now some onion, red onion. You just wanna thinly slice it and it's gonna add a nice sharp crispness to the salad with the otherwise mild flavors. And this is just a loose recipe, so you can double the quantity, you can add more cucumbers if you like, you can even add a raw green bell pepper because that is traditional in a horiatiki. I just refuse to eat raw green bell pepper, so there are none in mine. Two more ingredients that are classic in a horiatiki, kalamata, kalamata olives and capers, and we're just gonna drain these. Oh no, I'm supposed to drain the liquid. Instead, it's in my measuring cup. Drain some liquid and we'll grab olives. I'm gonna use about a half cup, fairly generous amount, but again, do what you like. We also have some capers, which I love. They're gonna add little pops of tangy saltiness throughout the salad. It looks so beautiful already. The only thing missing is the feta, which is absolutely essential in a Greek salad. I normally like to make my tofu feta because it's easy and it's protein packed, but since we're doing so many things today, I've got lots of components and recipes. I'm keeping things simple with some store-bought vegan feta. And this was also 50% off at the store yesterday, so I might have done some light hoarding. Final sprinkle of oregano. That's how a Greek salad is finished. That's a fantastic salad. And as you saw, it took like 10 minutes to make. If you want to make this ahead of time, don't dress it. Just prep all the vegetables and the olives and the capers. And when you're ready to serve, go ahead and drizzle it with the olive oil and vinegar. All right, let's go see if our moussaka is ready. It smells so good, but we can't dig in just yet because it's important to let the moussaka rest for at least 30 minutes. It's gonna continue to set up and firm, so please be patient. While we wait for this beauty to rest, let's see what our taste testers think. A little background first. A new thing I've been doing is asking my subscribers to test my recipes and film their reactions to be in my videos. If you wanna be a recipe tester for a future video, stay tuned until the end and I'll let you know how you can get involved. I'm really nervous because we have some Greek taste testers, like seriously Greek people with names like Orestes, Pita, Eftihia, Mitesh. Well, actually Mitesh is Indian, but his wife's family is Greek, so same pressure. First up is Eftihia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hello, I'm Eftihia. I'm Greek, and right now I live in Athens, Greece. I used to love moussaka. My grandma used to make it for us. I really hope I feel the same. 
This is perfect. It really reminds me of my grandma's recipe. I'm gonna eat two pieces for sure. Well, we could just stop the taste test here. Hi, I'm Orestes. I live in London for the past three years. This is my vegan moussaka that I made. I've made different iterations over the years, but let's try this one. Mm. Oh wow, oh it's really nice. That's the best bechamel, vegan bechamel sauce I've ever tried. Oh, amazing. Hi, I'm Chris. I am a Greek Cypriot born in Australia. It turned out well. No, oh, that's actually really nice. Yeah, that's really good. Mm. The pancake crumb on top is really nice as well. Hi everyone, my name is Bitesh from Connecticut. My wife and I just got married in August. She is of Greek origin, I'm Indian descent. Mitesh made this dish for his wife, her mom, and her grandmother. Three generations of Greeks. Whoopa! Ooh, something's hot in there. It's something hot. My mouth is hot. It's good, but spicy. Oh, I gotta drink. Cheers! Cheers. Your yaya is adorable. Every reaction video should include a yaya. It's very good. Delicious, hot and spicy. Mitesh, please tell me it's not spicy for you. You're in the same club, right? It does have some heat from the red pepper flakes, but to me, it's not overpowering. Ah, good. Mitesh did not think it was too spicy. It's not supposed to be a spicy dish, but if you are very sensitive to spicy food, go ahead and omit the red pepper flakes in the meat sauce. Bechamel sauce is awesome. Very good recipe, highly recommend it. Hope everybody tries it. Hi, my name is Peter. I'm from Sydney, Australia. She looks beautiful, exactly as I remember, and the bechamel is awesome. Mm. Uh-huh. Yep, that is exactly what I remember. Mum, I think, would be very proud. Mum would be proud. I will be eating the whole thing tonight. Next up, we have Nina from Berlin, who made both the lentil version and the faux meat version with some of her friends at a local community kitchen, which is super cool. Let's see what Nina thinks first. Mm. That's really good. I like both, I'm not sure, but I think this is my favorite. On the whole, most folks liked the moussaka, but there were some pretty tough taste testers in this crowd. Oh, a six? I'm devastated. <sighs> Just kidding, I, I can handle these scores. I'm not gonna cry tonight. I am, I am gonna cry. To take my mind off of this, let's head back into the kitchen to make our next recipe, Greek zucchini fritters. In Greek, these zucchini fritters are called kolokito kukik. Kolokito kokik. Kolokito kefedes. I did it. And they're delicious. They're one of my favorite foods and I can't wait to share them with you. I've got a pound and a half of zucchini here. I'm just gonna use the large holes of a box grater to grate them. This is all the zucchini we need. Now we're going to salt the zucchini and let it hang out by itself. This will draw out some of the excess water so the fritters can crisp up. And we'll prep everything else in the meantime. Fresh dill and mint to add incredible flavor here. Slice up some scallions for the oniony bite a generous amount of ground cumin, some freshly grated nutmeg, salt and pepper, of course, and just a little flour to bind. But we are gonna use a generous amount of panko breadcrumbs. These aren't really traditional in this recipe, but they do enhance the crispy, crunchy texture. I really love them here. And finally, some vegan feta because it's essential in these fritters. It adds creaminess, that salty, tangy Greek flavor, and also helps bind the fritters. Typically, you would add eggs here for structure and binding, but luckily, flax eggs work quite well. Once the flax meal rests with the water for 10 minutes, it thickens up really nicely. Now it's time for the most important part of the recipe. You gotta squeeze the out of the zucchini to get out all of the water. Zucchini is super watery. It's like 94% water. I think that a mesh produce bag or a nut milk bag works best. If you don't have one of those, you can use a cheesecloth or a thin dish towel. This should feel like an actual workout. If it doesn't, you're not working hard enough. Just keep squeezing. But I promise it's worth it because you end up with the best fritter texture ever. It's crispy and crunchy on the outside, but creamy and tender on the inside. Now you have yourself a big glass of green juice. Every vegan's dream. Just kidding, this is too salty to drink. I'm adding our grated zucchini to the batter last because the more you work the zucchini with your hands, the more water it's going to release. So adding it last minimizes that. Measure two tablespoons of the dough for each fritter, but I think it's just easier to grab some of the dough and weigh it on the scale, 25 grams. Press it together like so to compact it, then flatten it into a patty-like shape. They should be a scant half inch thick or one centimeter, kind of like the thickness of a double stuffed Oreo if you're familiar. Then just lightly press down on them so they're not so thick 
And to make them neat and round, I like to tuck in the edges like this. Oh, before we cook these fritters, let me show you how to make a super easy vegan tzatziki as a dipping sauce for the fritters. Totally optional, but it takes like five minutes. You need a good quality unsweetened vegan yogurt. I'm using the rest of that gigantic cucumber from our salad. Squeeze out as much water as you can from the cuke, and then we'll add some chopped dill, a little bit of raw garlic, red wine vinegar, salt and pepper, of course and then just drizzle with a tiny bit of olive oil on top. That's it. All right, it's time to fry these babies up, basically doing a shallow fry. So heat up a few tablespoons of olive oil in a large frying pan, medium high heat. You can fit about half the fritters in a 12 inch pan like this. Three to four minutes on the first side, press down a little bit to flatten them. Once they're gorgeously golden brown on the bottom like this, so beautiful. Give them a flip and reduce the heat just a little bit so they don't burn and you wanna give them two to three more minutes. Get these on a paper towel to absorb some oil and a final pinch of salt to bring out all the flavors. So excited to dry these. Ooh. Quick pause so we can watch some subscriber reaction videos to these fritters. Then I'll head back into the kitchen to show you how I put this meal together. Here we are. I've got my beautiful wife next to me. Kolikito Kifteves are ready. We also made some of the vegan tzatziki. Fellas, take note. Jason over here has not only flawlessly pronounced Kolikito Kifteves, he has also made a delicious dish for his wife and called her beautiful for the whole world to see. That is what a gentleman looks like. Very good, <laughs> very, very good. Very nice, well done, great recipe. Mm -hmm. Every bite gets better and better. As Greek people, <laughs> we're going to create a sandwich. I didn't do anything. Bravo. Hi, I'm Justin. My entire mother's family is from Greece. My yaya would make these all the time. I really like how um, fresh and pungent the dill is. I think there are just so many flavors that are baked in and cooked in uh, with the flax eggs and the flour. It just tastes very good and it tastes just like Greece. Hi, I'm Ioana. I'm Greek Cypriot and I live in London. I've been vegan for the past five years and I really miss Koloki Pukifteve. So this is my fiance Andreas who helped prepare the meal. Hi everyone. Mmm, takes me back home. Mmm, proper flavors, yes. Mm -hmm. Yay! That's so good. Definitely making this again. If you want to be a taste tester, sign up at the link right here. All right, back to my kitchen. So good. I'm gonna have myself a Greek feast with some white wine. Y'all know where to find the recipes. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.